Yeah. And you can explain your party, Party of the Labouring Masses, the PLM's uh, view on Duterte, what it means. Oh, Duterte, of course, is uh, the representative of the ruling class. He's no different from uh, the past uh, presidents in terms of his uh, position in power. The presidency is always the the representative of the ruling class, it's like the chairman of the board of the ruling class. Whoever sits there, if that's uh, the structure that he assumes, yeah. he assumes or he sits in that kind of uh, uh, bourgeois structure. So uh, his office is really designed to serve the interests of the ruling class, of the capitalist class. So unless if he destroys that structure, that bourgeois structure, and empower, he facilitates the empowerment of the working class to take over state power, then he'll be a different uh, person in power or he'll be a different politician. But he's no different from the others. He just have the he just has this uh, approach, a, a uh, rather an obnoxious, weird approach, populist, right-winger, mm. but uh, Machiavellian because he brought the Maoist left in. So he, he represents the work, ruling class. We have no illusion about any illusions about Duterte. Yeah. Um, why do you think that he won? And why do you think it seems he, that he is very widely supported? Uh, can you talk about that? Why he won and why it is, given everything you've saying, it is that he seems to have such support from a lot of even what uh, Walden Bellio mm. coined this term called electoral insurgency. It's like that the masses are not ready for an actual revolution, but they look up to leaders the, who can uh, articulate their, uh, their pains, their suffering. And they found an icon in Duterte. Uh, th th this is the articulation of the masses against their the despair poverty brought about by neoliberalism for like 14 years of neoliberal rule and even the 90s the 90s during the ramos administration was the start of the neoliberal attack against the working class in the philippines and it brought about really much suffering high prices the regulation the privatization of basic services uh in increasing prices in oil, basic commodities, food production was, uh, or agriculture was stunted because of the e, unlimited entry of imported goods and the conversion of uh, agricultural land to real estates. And uh, that's it. It brought a huge imbalance in the economy and it brought about much poverty. And uh, Duterte has this anti-imperialist rhetoric. He's... Uh, his hate, apparent hatred to America. Yeah. But his reason for uh, opposing American policy is because Obama is against the war on drugs. Policy. So he, is this, he has this petty bourgeois single issue politics in him, which is all about drugs. Yeah. Can you explain, given that, well, you started to touch on it, but given that he isn't going to do anything about the policies uh, impoverishing people. In the policy you just described, what do you expect him to do? And I guess part of that is obviously it's been followed around the world. Is mm. the, the killings of of drug users and small scale alleged drug users and small scale drug drug, drug dealers? Can you talk about about that and anything else you expect from Duterte, given yeah. that he won't meet popular demands? It's now unraveling. Uh, his real color is unraveling. That he's still the same neoliberal. Uh, mm. Uh, representative, he, he will still continue on the same old neoliberal policies. He had this uh, campaign platform to end contractualization, but the Labor Department is on the verge of issuing a new department order or a new policy on contractual labor, which will just abolish the the lumpen types of contractors. The the we call it labor on labor-only contracting, wherein uh, agencies, third-party agencies will just hire workers. They have no capital, but uh, they will now 
uh, legitimize labor contractors and require them to have their own machineries, yeah. tools. So, so like in Australia, it's so labor hire. So labor hire. Like the same yeah. thing. You know, workers aren't permanent. They're hired by the third. Yeah. So they will just fragment the production process. Yeah. Delegate it to different capitalists, and it's part of that neoliberal agenda. Mm. And he's good at it. He, he had a sophisticated tweaking of the contractual work agreement mm. so to make it like to go away from the old primitive form, which is really the greed of those agencies are very apparent. Okay, uh, another is the free education platform of uh, Duterte, free college education. So he promised it, but. Uh, he said that he will only implement it for a year, just a pilot test. Mm. If it will not work, then he will go back to the same old semi-privatized state education institutions. Mm. And as well as the social pension fund, uh, he increased it for like uh, 100 pesos. That's like uh, more or less $50 here in Australia. Uh, the, the original demand was... Uh, about eighty dollars, so he reduced it to just forty dollar dollar in increase, mm. but of uh, increase in benefits. But this entails an increase in contribution as well. So there's no universal pension fund. The pension fund is still uh, does not work for the retirees. So lots of promises on the economic side, but he's just going back to the same old neoliberal agenda. I'm uh, wondering about then, given that then some of his more authoritarian moves, mm -hmm. um, of which the his war and war on drugs and the killings is part of. What sort of response has that gotten? Had there been much in the way of protests or resistance to this? Okay, his popularity is gradually dipping, mm -hmm. from ninety percent approval in the surveys when mm -hmm. he was inaugurated. It's like at all time high, ninety two percent approval from mm -hmm. the Filipinos. It's now at 60% approval. It's popular still, but it has been reduced to 30%. And there's this, this new survey by a, a, a big survey firm, which uh, it yielded a 74% disapproval of the uh, return of martial rule. So most Filipinos are still against dictatorship or the return of dictatorial rule. It's just that the PR people of Duterte are really has this really well-oiled machinery in social media, that, so it make, they make it appear that most Filipinos agree with fascism, but that's not the reality on the ground. We, we saw some protests against moves to venerate Marcos. Like, yes. Do you, you discuss the, the significance you think of these protests? Yes, we. Uh, PLM uh, has, has always been active with those yeah. protests, and these are spontaneous outbursts from the youth. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, th that's a pattern I see every time, or in every point of history where we're in, there's fascism, there's, there's oppression, direct, overt state oppression. It's the youth who are the first ones to rise up. Yeah. Like in Russia during Lenin's time, or pre-Lenin's time during the Narodniks. Mm -hmm like the anti-war uh, movement in France, in America, uh, during the Cold War or the Vietnam War. It's the youth who always rise up first. But uh, whenever there's an ebb in the political flow of society, there's an ebb like a stability. The state maintains stability. Their, pro their voices also you know, go with the flow. They're also, they, they do not become that active in uh, the, the social movement. So uh, this is just like a natural process or historical process we're having in the Philippines. So the key there and the PLM's role there is to link the youth, the spontaneous youth movement, which is uh, articulated by the anti-Marcos, anti-martial rule uh, campaign, to link it up with the struggles of the workers and the basic masses. On the workers, I wonder if you could just maybe describe your own your own role. You're a labor activist. Yeah. Yeah. Describe that what you do in the the, the work of comrades. Yeah, more of I'm on the organizational side of things. I'm yeah. the secretary general of a uh, labor federation, yeah. so I maintain the I ensure that there will be regular education, Marxist what's the education. Name, what's the name of the group? 
Super, Solidarity of Unions in the Philippines for Empowerment and Reforms. It was established in 1997. Yeah. I was in grade school then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, it's one of the, it's, uh, it was built by uh, the late Popay Lagban. Yeah. This is to have a formal uh, uh, federation for collective bargaining purposes mm -hmm. to unite these unions. But, so it's one of the f founders of PLM. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wonder, what does it, that work involve? I, I, maybe more generally, the, the role of trying to organize workers at the moment in the Philippines, I, I would imagine the union movement has been weakened yeah. by contractualization. Yeah. I wonder if you could talk about what the struggles are and the, what the, how the union movement's dealing with the fact that so much labor's gone overseas. What's good about uh, the what's happening in the labor movement is that the most, if not all, of the uh, various fragmented labor organizations are now uniting, at least in a tactical basis, against uh, all forms of contractualization, even the, the these latest policy by the Labor Department. So we are now converging with the yellows, the yellow unions, the, the economist unions, mm -hmm. even the socialist or uh, militant unions outside of uh, PLM or BMP. Mm -hmm. And even with the Maoists, it's for the first time in, since the split that the Maoist labor formation, KMU, has sit with us in one table to discuss uh, a tactical unity or a tactical united front against contractualization. So, yeah, the unionism has weakened, but it's not just about unionism. It's about politicizing the workers, radicalizing them in any forms. Uh, building unions is not a cut and dry solution to to build the working class movement. That's why we need the youth. Yeah. We need the young activists, emerging act, young activists to teach or to educate the workers, link them with their struggles and be one with them in the working class struggles. Well, one of the largest parts of the, the left has been the Maoists. They yeah. appear to uh, be offering critical support to the Duterte, yeah. even entering the government. You may be the, the PLM's assessment of that. If it's undiplomatic, you don't have to it's still part of their war strategy. Yeah. It's still part of it's, uh, it. Make, it makes sense if you're a Maoist. Yeah. It makes sense because uh, uh, the NPA, their armed yeah. militia, the New People's Army, has really suffered a significant setback, especially since the Arroyo regime, where in uh, around almost a thousand were killed mm. under Arroyo, then under Aquino. Their key leaders were arrested. Key leaders, including the chair of the Communist Party, was arrested. So the Maoists have to negotiate this to Duterte, use the personal connection between Sison and Duterte, their like personal friendship, to uh, lobby for the release of their key leaders. Otherwise, they would really be weakened. Their armed struggle would really be weakened if they do not negotiate that. So they have to, like, one step backward two step forward uh, approach in it but it you know it compromised their political line is that they have they do not hit the the turte or they, they do not ask the accountability of the turte with regard to human rights violations and contractualization they just uh, they are just critical on the issue but they do not uh, they do not blame the turte on it <laughs> yeah. well i guess maybe just to finish we could have some um, what, what, what do you think the next period will hold in terms of hope for so, the, the, the struggles that you've talked about? Do you think, we, are we likely to see a rise in the youth struggle? Personally, I still, this is a st an ongoing discourse in our party, but personally, this is like, you know, like the 1905 all over again in Russia. Right. There are socialist circles that are that's been forming among the youth. There are spontaneous youth upsurges for democratic rights inside their campuses, and there's really a uh, renewal of socialist discourse. These emerging uh, young activists are asking about socialism, so and that they are eager to study it. So it's like Russia all over again. The key here is to link these emerging socialists among the youth, link them with the workers and the masses, and. This is what we call the Youth and Workers Alliance that right. can bring about, you know, 
hope for a revolution. Sure. Just hope so for a revolution. Perspective. Personally, the my perspective. Still this is still a, an ongoing discussion uh, about PLM. I could, of course, this uh, this is this has to be a, you know explored really. But uh, PLM is working with the youth, yeah. the um, radicalizing youth, and uh, its role is to link the youth struggle with the worker struggle. Have this youth yeah. and workers alliance. Sure.